What's up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to write a rule for g of x by transforming f of x. So here we're given that f of x is equal to x cubed minus 6, and then we have a couple transformations that we need to apply to it to come up with our g of x function, right? So the first transformation that we have to apply it says a translation three units to the left, all right? Whenever you have to translate something to the left or the right, you need to put it inside a set of parentheses with your x's, right? So here we're gonna say that g of x is equal to, here we have x cubed, right? So we're gonna put that in parentheses. So we're gonna have x plus or minus some number, and then this exponent still stays as a cubed. Now it says three units to the left. Now if you think of a number line, uh, moving to the left means moving negative three spaces, right? Uh, so since we, we're going to move left three spaces, we want to put a positive 3 in here. You always want to put the opposite number of the direction you're moving it. Okay, so that's the first transformation that we're applying. And we still have this minus 6 right here, right? So let's write minus 6 right there. Now the other transformation we have to apply says followed by a reflection in the y-axis. Now if you reflect something in the y-axis, that's the same thing as turning your x's negative. So I can say something like g of negative x is equal to, and then wherever I have an x, so up here, wherever I have an x, I just put a positive x, right? Now, to reflect it in the y-axis, wherever I have an x, I need to put a negative x. So then here, we're going to have negative x plus 3, that's cubed, and then minus 6. Okay, so then this would be our final answer. So g of x is equal to, in parentheses, negative x plus 3 cubed minus 6. Boom! All right, let's try another one. So here we have f of x is equal to x to the fourth plus 2x plus 6. And it says uh, the first transformation is a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. All right. Uh, now, whenever we're talking about vertical stretching or shrinking, it's kind of intuitive. All right. So for a vertical let's say stretch in this case, right? Vertical stretch by a factor of two. That just means we're gonna multiply our whole function by two, right? So times two. Now, if this had said vertical shrink, again, it's intuitive, right? That a shrink you would think is a smaller number than a stretch. Stretching seems like you're making it bigger. Shrinking seems like you're making it smaller, right? So if it said something like a vertical sh uh, shrink by a factor of one half, then that just means we would have multiplied by one, our function by one half. Okay, and I just wanna make this distinction now because we're gonna run into it in a couple problems. Uh, now, uh, if we're talking about horizontal stretching or shrinking, it's basically the opposite. So if I said uh, we have to transform something with a horizontal stretch by a factor of two, well, that means we would multiply by the reciprocal, all right? Whenever we're talking about horizontal stretching or shrinking, you basically flip your factor. So if it said multiply by a factor of two, well, we would actually multiply by one half, all right? And if it said uh, transform it by a horizontal shrink by a factor of one fifth, you wouldn't multiply by one fifth, you would multiply by five over one, right? The reciprocal or just five. Okay, and the only other little caveat I wanna explain here is uh, whenever we're talking about vertical stretching or shrinking, you multiply the whole function by that number. When we're talking about horizontal stretching or shrinking, you only multiply your x values by that number. Okay, so here we're gonna uh, multiply this by, it says vertical stretch by a factor of two, right? So we're gonna multiply the whole thing by two. So we're gonna say that g of x is equal to two times f of x, right? So two times f of x, and that's gonna be equal to two times our whole uh, trinomial right there, right? So x to the fourth plus two x plus six. And if we simplify this by just distributing, uh, this is gonna be equal to two x to the fourth plus four x plus 12, right? So this is what g of x is equal to now. Now the other transformation uh, it says, followed by a translation four units to the right. All right, so again, we want to translate something left or right. So four units to the right, again, just thinking of a number line, that would be in the positive direction, right? So positive four. 
So again, uh, what we're going to do is wherever we have an X, we're going to insert a set of parentheses. And instead of putting a positive 4 next to it, we're going to put the opposite number, right? Negative 4. So then here, we're going to say that G of X is equal to 2. And then we have an X here, right? So we're going to write X minus 4 uh, raised to the fourth plus 4 uh, times this X right here. So again, we're going to replace it with an X minus 4 and then plus 12 at the end, right? So then that would be your answer right there. All right, here we have f of x is equal to x cubed plus 2x squared minus 9. Uh, the first transformation is a horizontal shrink by a factor of one third. So a horizontal shrink by a factor of one third, that doesn't mean we're going to multiply by one third, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal, right? So that would be, uh, we're going to be multiplying by 3, all right? And then remember, we're not going to multiply the whole function by 3, only the x's. So we're going to have that g of x is equal to f of 3x, all right? We're going to multiply all our x's by a 3. So f of 3 of x is going to be equal to, so first of all, x cubed is going to be equal to uh, 3x cubed plus 2 times x squared, so this x, same thing, right, 3x uh, squared, and then minus 9 at the end, right? Now, if we simplify this, we're going to get that g of x is equal to, so remember, you always have to apply an exponent to everything that's inside of your parentheses, right? So we have to apply it to the number and to the variable. So 3 cubed, that's equal to 27, and then x cubed is just x cubed, right? And then here, uh, 3x squared is equal to 9x squared, right? 9x squared. And then we're still multiplying by this 2 out here. So 2 times 9 is equal to 18, right? So then here we have positive or plus, right? Plus 18x squared. And then that minus 9 right there. Okay, the other transformation is it says, and a translation two units up, right? So to translate or shift, something just up or down, it's pretty simple. Uh, so this says two units up, so we're just going to add two. And you just add it to the very end of your function. So here we have minus nine, so we're just gonna put a plus two right there. So negative nine plus two is equal to negative seven, right? So we can already simplify this. So we're just gonna write it as negative seven like that, right? Uh, the last transformation is right here followed by a reflection in the x-axis, right? So remember, for the y-axis, we basically just had to turn all our x's negative. But to reflect something in the x-axis, we have to multiply the whole polynomial by negative 1, right? So we're basically going to say negative, negative 1 times g of x. So what's that going to be equal to? So we're going to multiply the whole thing right here by a negative sign, right? So we have 27x cubed plus 18x squared minus 7. So then we're going to get that g of x is equal to, and then just distributing this basically, right, negative 1 in here, we're going to get negative 27x cubed minus 18x squared plus 7. All right, so that would be your final answer right there. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.